We all know Donald Trump likes to put his name on expensive things, from a tower in New York to a yacht on the sea. Keep watching to see the life of the Trump Princess Yacht. Trump acquired his yacht in 1987 for $29 million. This was an incredible deal, considering the asking price was $50 million and the agreed price was $30 million. Trump says to really appreciate the level of quality, you have to see the interior. The Trump Princess has more than 100 cabins. The walls of these cabins are covered in chamois leather and bird's eye maple. Both are on the exotic and expensive side of building materials, especially when they're used to cover 100 rooms. Trump was so impressed by the chamois that he had 320 meters of it replaced when he did his renovation. He also designated one of the cabins as a children's room, and the hair salon was turned into a cloakroom. Another area made of fine materials are the bathrooms, which are done in onyx. It's a bold choice to go with all stone, and this isn't your everyday onyx either. It's hand-carved by the finest craftsman in Italy. When the previous owner was building the yacht, he did it with the intention of making it totally self-contained. That's why the boat is also outfitted with a poker room, a patisserie, a three-chair hair salon, a screening room with an 800 film library, and a hospital with an operating theater. Not sure how comfortable we'd be getting a procedure on a yacht, but the option's there. The most extravagant room on the yacht by far is the master suite. The bedroom takes up the full beam of the hull. It has a tortoise shell ceiling, a three meter wide bed, and bedside remote controls for the entertainment center, room service, and the curtains. There's even a secret exit. Then from the bedroom, you can head down a corridor, past a mirrored dressing room, and into Trump's bathroom. The onyx floor tiles are carved in an intricate sunburst pattern. To one side is a room with the owner's barber chair. We know Donald likes to keep his hair shipshape. Adjacent to the barber is the shower and sauna. It has 13 nozzles and is carved in the shape of a scalloped shell from a single piece of onyx. It took a team of workers a year to complete the carving. Other amenities include two gold sinks, recessed lighting, and enough counter space to store a cosmetics aisle. From the bathroom, you move on to Trump's TV area, then into his large sitting area panelled with more chamois leather. This area also houses the owner's private elevator to his private sun deck. An enclosed section has the bar, pantry, video games, and another sauna and shower. Outside, behind bulletproof glass, sits a circular swimming pool. It's only 2.4 meters across, which sounds small, but it has a jet so you can swim all day against the current and never reach the other side. You might recognize the concept from the endless pools infomercial that circulated in the early 2010s. Although the other rooms are not as grand as the owner's suite, the other lodging cabins do all come with ensuite bathrooms. The sinks have a unique carved look with gold hardware. In other words, everyone gets to travel like a princess on the Trump princess. The beauty of the interior helps us to understand what Trump meant when he said he was buying a great piece of art at a ridiculously low price rather than just a boat. Even though Trump doesn't love boats, the guy he bought the boat from loved them and built this yacht to meet the highest standards of sea travel. The Trump Princess is 86 meters or 282 feet long from hull to stern. It has five decks and can accommodate 22 guests and 52 crew members. The yacht was designed to be the ultimate status symbol by British designer John Bannenberg. The entire interior of the ship was designed by the famous Luigi Sturcio. The top deck doubles as a helipad with Trump's trademark T and there's a pair of 9-meter tenders to get from yacht to land and vice versa. The fuel tanks hold 618,256 liters of diesel fuel. The yacht is powered by two Nohab Polar engines. These give the ship a maximum range of 8,500 nautical miles at a cruising speed of 17.5 knots, or 20 miles an hour. Trump claimed it would cost $2.5 million a year to operate the yacht. That's quite an investment for someone who isn't a fan of boats. Oddly similar to his predecessor, Trump ran into a little financial trouble and sold Trump Princess to Prince Al-Walid bin Talal of Saudi Arabia for $19 million. That is a huge discount from what the previous owner paid for the yacht, especially when you acknowledge that Prince Al-Walid bin Talal is worth an estimated $20 billion. The prince is known for lavish spending on luxury things such as vacations, a diamond-encrusted Mercedes, and the most expensive plane in the world. At this point, a $19 million yacht is barely a drop in the bucket. Talal renamed the yacht Kingdom 5KR. The name stems from his investment company, Kingdom Holding Company, his lucky number 5, and his children's initials, K and R. She now spends most of her time birthed in the south of France at Antibes. 
it's almost heartbreaking to know he spent a huge chunk of money to just let the yacht sit in a harbour. Although occasionally the boat is seen cruising to Cannes or Monte Carlo, perhaps the prince is a fan of film festivals and gambling. Even though the current whereabouts of the yacht are fairly unassuming, or at least as unassuming as a five-debt yacht can be, it has a hugely colourful history. It went for an idea to a business yacht for an arms dealer, to a luxury party boat for a future United States president, to a trophy yacht for a Saudi Arabian prince. We can only imagine who this floating palace will belong to next. The Trump Princess was a famous vessel long before it belonged to Trump. Adnan Khashoggi was an arms dealer with connections to the Saudi Arabian royal family. They used these connections to build a fortune worth around $3 billion at its peak. He acquired his first yacht when he was 18 and traded up as his wealth increased. In the 1970s, Khashoggi owned two yachts, and though they were impressive, neither were the symbol of wealth he was looking for. In other words, they were nice, but he wanted people to know at first glance that he was rich. So he commissioned British yacht designer John Ballenberg to design the most incredible yacht the world had ever seen. We're happy he could achieve that before Jeff Bezos came along. Trump's yacht originally launched in 1980. Back then, it was named the Nabila, after Khashoggi's daughter. The vessel itself cost $35 million to build, but Khashoggi also commissioned an Italian designer to decorate the interior, which is believed to cost more than the boat. The broker that arranged the sale of the Nabila to Trump says that the original cost is unknown. We guess that means he spent more money than cents on the lavish trimmings. Throughout Khashoggi's ownership of the Nabila, he had grand parties with famous guests on board. And it was not only a hotspot for celebrities and movie stars, but also an invaluable business instrument. He hosted political leaders and diplomats. On one occasion, he entertained five heads of state, including three kings, simultaneously on the Nabila. Often the Nabila's guests were Arab princes and European and American businessmen of all descriptions. They used 150 telephones and a satellite communication system to arrange arms sales and commodities trades. When contracts were ready to be signed, the yacht could easily sail into international waters, where sovereign restrictions on business transactions don't apply. On many occasions, deals were conducted simultaneously in different suites. It all sounds a little shady, but the owner of the yacht can do with it what they will. In addition to a history of parties and business, the Nabila was also a floating headquarters for an evil villain. Don't worry, not in real life. The Nabila was featured in the James Bond movie, Never Say Never Again. She was renamed Flying Saucer for the film and acted as the villain's mobile headquarters. This is officially the coolest thing about this yacht, if we do say so ourselves. Unfortunately for Khashoggi, his wealth was not as eternal as he would have hoped. His empire started to crumble around the mid-80s, so he procured the loan for $50 million and put up Nabila as collateral. He then defaulted on his loan in 1987, and a Swiss holding company took possession of the yacht. When Trump learned that Nabila was for sale, he made a cash bid. The broker had received two other offers, but subject to several conditions. Eventually, Trump won the yacht for $29 million. Considering yachts of this caliber sell for hundreds of millions of dollars in the current market, Trump got the deal of a lifetime. Trump won the bid by making an all-cash offer and agreeing to rename the boat. Khashoggi didn't want anyone else having a boat with his daughter's name. Trump saved a million dollars just for changing the name. After buying the yacht, the Don paid an additional $8.5 million to have the yacht refitted in the Netherlands by Amels. They repainted the hull, rebuilt the main engines, and replaced 320 meters of chamois leather. One of the cabins was delegated as a children's room, and the hair salon was turned into a cloakroom, and Trump claimed it would cost $2.5 million a year to operate the yacht. That's quite an investment for someone who isn't a fan of boats. After renaming it the Trump Princess and completing his renovations, Trump set sail from the Azores in June 1988 and arrived in New York on July 4th, just in time for the huge party the Trumps threw on it that night. We expect nothing less from a group of proud patriots like the Trump family. Like Khashoggi, Trump also used the yacht as a business instrument, though in a different way. In the summer months, Trump Princess cruises the East Coast from her base in Atlantic City. She docks there at the marina in full view of Trump's Castle Hotel. He makes the boat available for selected charities and very high rollers who spend millions of dollars a year in the casinos. So rather than conduct his business on board, he turned the yacht into a source of revenue all on its own. In his words, there's a whole market there. While he was building Farley Marina, he was trying to get the boat because he knew she would blow everyone's mind. She would become a spectacle. We have to agree, considering Khashoggi stipulated that the boat be huge enough to intimidate even the owners of other big yachts. Because what's the point of spending a fortune on a yacht if it doesn't make other rich people jealous? In fact, back when the Trump princess was the Nabila, one of Trump's friends saw it and was floored. He was at the helm of his own large yacht in the Mediterranean, feeling proud. Then he saw the Nabila 
and it swamped his boat. According to Trump, Nabia gave him an inferiority complex. We don't doubt that was a factor when Trump decided to buy her a few years later. Before Donald Trump served as the outspoken and divisive president of the United States, he was famous for being rich. Stay tuned to see his collection of million dollar mansions. In true Trump fashion, the most expensive property in his collection is the Trump National Doral Golf Club in Miami, Florida. An avid golfer, Trump snatched up what was formerly Doral Golf Resort and Spa for $150 million in 2012. The property is 700 acres of land primed for a luxurious golf experience. And for a while, it proved to be a good investment for the Trumps. Before the pandemic, the resort was bringing in over $70 million a year, according to official financial disclosures he made while still in office. Unfortunately for them, their success was short-lived. The effects of his controversial presidency and the global travel restrictions of the pandemic proved catastrophic for the hospitality and tourism market. Their profits fell by more than $33 million, which is an enormous drop of over 40% in revenue. The club has definitely gone through some ups and downs. However, 2016 brought a fresh start to the estate. The Trump National Doral Golf Club underwent a $250 million renovation. The makeover was unveiled by Trump's daughter, Ivanka Trump. The resort currently has 643 guest rooms and over 100,000 square feet of space for business meetings and events. In addition to lodging, there's a state-of-the-art clubhouse, numerous restaurants and lounges, a 50,000 square foot spa, tennis courts and golf facilities. It's one of the largest hotels in Miami Port and the most expensive living options include 27 premier suites and two presidential suites. There are also 48 spa suites where guests can experience beauty and wellness treatments from their rooms. If you're in the mood for a celebration, you can have your pick of five glittering ballrooms. The grandest is, of course, the Donald J. Trump Grand Ballroom. It's over 24,000 square feet of pure wealth, with coiffed ceilings and crystal chandeliers. Outside, nestled in the grounds, is the Royal Palm Pool, with 18 private cabanas. And we can't leave the golf club without talking about the green. The resort has four courses in total, the Red Tiger, the Golden Palm, the Silver Fox and the Blue Monster, which is deceptively difficult according to players. The club used to host the World Golf Championships and many celebrities including Tiger Woods were patrons. You know what they say, invest in what you love. That's why Trump owns multiple golf courses. In 2006, he bought a 1,400 acre plot of land called Belmody, just north of Aberdeen, Scotland. The estate itself cost Trump $60 million to buy and a further $200 million to develop the golf course. Guests can stay in either the Superior Queen Double Room, the Superior Queen Twin Room, or the Grand Deluxe King Double Room. All come with fine linens, beautiful views, and ensuite Italian marble bathrooms with underfloor heating. For the colder months, the Trumps moved down to Florida. In 1985, after years of trying to buy it, Trump finally acquired Mar-a-Lago for $8 million. The price included the estate and all its contents. Ironically, one of the richest people in the world got a great discount on the place. According to Forbes, the estate is worth $160 million as of 2018. In the early 1990s, Mar-a-Lago was transformed into a members club. When Trump ran into financial troubles, he turned the mansion into a cash cow by opening it up to fee-paying members. The lavish restoration cost millions of dollars. It added two swimming pools, a beauty salon, spa, and a 20,000 square foot ballroom. The Louis XIV style space has $7 million in gilding, and each of the gold basins in the bathroom cost $100,000. For members, Mar-a-Lago offers access to two dining rooms, a beach club, pool, spa, and guest suites. Despite the luxury, we're not sure we'd want to stay there. In 2017, an Associated Press investigation found that Mar-a-Lago had 78 counts of health code violations. Yikes! The Trump family clearly loves Florida. Not only did they have two resort-level properties, but they also have a more subtle, family-style home in the Sunshine State. It was purchased from Donald's sister, retired judge Marianne Trump Barry, for $18.3 million. He didn't buy the property directly. It's owned by a company related to Donald Trump and his family. His sons, Eric Trump and Donald Trump Jr., ran a limited liability company called 1125 South Ocean LLC. The company bought the house in 2018. 
The house is oceanfront, with beautiful picture windows that show sweeping views of the ocean. It's eight beds and over eight and a half baths, with a total of 8,269 square feet. The house has a formal dining area, multiple sitting rooms, a grand entrance with a curved staircase, a large terrace, and an enormous balcony that looks out to the ocean. The furnishings are heavily made over from the traditional style it was outfitted with when the Trumps bought it. Although the place is beautiful and seemingly a perfect vacation home for the Trump family, the house was meant to be a money earner. It was almost immediately listed to rent for $100,000 a month on Trump International Realty. By 2019, the price was reduced to $65,000 due to lack of tenants. The house is currently listed for $59 million on Realtor.com. Before the fame of reality TV and politics, Donald Trump was just a husband and father looking for a house. Okay, that's not accurate. But in 1982, while married to Ivana Trump and father to Ivanka and Donald Jr., Trump bought a house in Greenwich, Connecticut for $4 million. It was a trophy home in one of America's wealthiest towns. The property was six acres of land with sweeping views of Long Island Sound. The house was decorated in rich gold. This is evident in the grand entrance with a double staircase and a hand-painted mural on the left wall. The house was built in the 1930s and the layout adhered to the classic style with reception rooms, wood panelling, rich drapes and antiques. The eight-bedroom waterfront estate also has eight fireplaces, a five-car garage, a plush movie theatre, a pool house and an indoor swimming pool. Outside, the house boasts a tennis court, a swimming pool, a private dock and a putting green. It even sits on its own peninsula, surrounded by peaceful waters. When Donald and Ivana eventually divorced, she got the mansion as part of the settlement and went on to sell it for $15 million in 1998. The current owners have been trying to sell it since 2014. We guess for some people, there is such a thing as too much gold leaf. As of 2020, the house is on sale for $32 million. In Trumpland, there is no such thing as too many golf courses. In 2002, Trump National Golf Club bought an estate in Bedminster for $35 million. It's located 40 miles west of New York City and Trump immediately began renovating it into a luxury club and golf course. They managed to have it opened in time for the 4th of July in 2004. Bedminster offers a 36-hole golf course, a 16-acre practice facility, an indoor golf learning center, and even equestrian facilities. But these perks don't come without a hefty price. As of 2016, the reported membership fee was $300,000. Paying your dues gets you the golf facilities, access to a heated swimming pool, eight tennis courts, a basketball court, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a helipad for flying visits. For lodging, members can rent one of five luxury cottages or 11 suites during their stay. Here's hoping the food is better than Mar-a-Lago's. Although a renovation plan submitted in 2020 has started rumors that the house will be under new ownership, Ivanka Trump and her husband Jared Kushner were married on the property in 2009, and the renovations have started rumors that the couple will be moving there permanently. And what kind of real estate mogul would Trump be if he didn't have his own vineyard? From May 2011 into 2012, Donald paid $14.6 million to buy the land, equipment, and inventory for a 776-acre vineyard home in Charlottesville, Virginia. His purchases were complete when he bought the Albemarle House, completing his acquisition of the entire estate. In 2015, Trump opened the estate as a bed and breakfast. Today, the 26,000-square-foot mansion is still full of historic details and boasts hand-painted plaster ceilings and wallpaper antique mantles, and 150-year-old English oak. The sprawling acres of land have manicured English gardens, fishing ponds, and an outdoor pool and hot tub surrounded by lounge areas. And as an added bonus, it's the largest vineyard in Virginia. The hotel rooms show ornate provincial furniture, gilded mirrors, and views of the property. Not to mention enormous ensuite bathrooms with soaking tubs and gold and white tile flooring. The property is also home to a movie theater, a billiards room, a fitness center, a spa, and of course, a wine tasting room. The brochure makes it look like a fun vacation for the whole family. One of Trump's earlier attempted golf clubs is his Seven Springs estate in Westchester, New York. He bought it in 1996 for $7.5 million and had dreams of turning it into a Trump-branded golf course. 
his dreams were crushed by protests. But rather than selling it and moving on, he kept the property as a retreat for him and his family. The property is 230 acres of land with a 5,000 square foot mansion at the center. The house has three swimming pools, a carriage house, and 15 bedrooms. He could run a seriously swanky bed and breakfast out of the place if he wanted to. The manicured lawns would have made the perfect setting for Trump's golf course. Too bad the neighbors didn't want golf balls in their yards. Inside is a tribute to Trump's lavish style with marble floors, stone staircases, and high molded ceilings. Not to mention gold accents throughout. It's full of modern amenities, but also in Trump fashion, the place is under investigation. Trump valued the property at $291 million, but failed to develop the estate. So he allegedly inflated the assets to help secure loans and other financial benefits. You'd think a billionaire wouldn't need to commit tax fraud to get a bank loan. Joe Biden handily beat Donald Trump in the 2020 election, so Trump had to say goodbye to Air Force One. However, the former president still has a private jet of his own, a $100 million Boeing 757. At least, that's what it used to be worth. The once glorious private jet has high-grade leather seats, rare mahogany cabinets, and even a bathroom sink made of 24 karat gold. There's just one problem. Trump's jet is in serious disrepair and lying idle on an airport ramp in Orange County, New York. Even though the plane is exposed to the elements and rusting in the rain, it's still worth millions of dollars. The parts alone are worth a small fortune. Let's take a look at Trump's gold-plated private jet. Trump's Boeing 757 is absolutely massive, fitting for a guy with such a big personality. It's 47 meters long and has a 38 meter wingspan. That means it's about three times larger than most private jets. Trump has appropriately dubbed his flying luxury palace Trump Force One, but he actually didn't use the jet at all while he was in office. Presidents can only fly on Air Force One. Trump Force One is one of the largest privately owned corporate jets in the world, and it's quite obvious that it's owned by the Donald. Trump has his name plastered on the side of the jet just in case there is any confusion as to who owns the Flying Fortress. Would you expect anything less from a man who's obsessed with putting his name on everything? Trump's 757 is configured for 43 passengers, which is significantly less than the 239 passenger capacity of a commercial 757. 18 of the seats on the jet are executive class. Trump completely modified his 757 and turned it into a spacious flying mansion. Trump Force One has plenty of legroom, unlike a commercial 757. Trump Force One isn't just luxurious, it's powerful too. It's equipped with two Rolls-Royce RB211 turbofan engines. Each engine provides 40,000 pounds of thrust. That means the jet can reach 41,000 feet in just 12 minutes. The interior of Trump Force One is decorated in Trump's signature style. It has customized cream-colored leather seats, rare mahogany cabinets, ultra-suede ceiling panels, and plenty of 24-karat gold. Oh, so much gold! Trump must love gold more than gold member. The light sockets are gold. There's decorative gold trim throughout the cabin, and even the seat buckles are gold. Even the bathroom is filled with gold. The sink is gold-plated, as are the faucets. If you were to melt down all the gold found in Trump Force One, it would be enough to cover the outside of a Greyhound bus. Trump was heavily involved in the design process of the jet's interior. He contacted an interior design company that specializes in private jet modification even before he bought the 757 from Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen. It took six months to renovate the 757 into a gold-plated marvel, and Trump insisted that gold leaf cover anything metal in the plane's interior. The entire process set Trump back about $250,000. We all know how much Trump loves to watch TV, so it's no surprise that Trump Force One is equipped with a state-of-the-art screening room. It's about the size of a typical home theater and comes complete with a 57-inch TV. The plane has two bedrooms, both of which have ultra-luxurious bedspreads with high thread counts. The pillows are adorned with the Trump crest, something you'll notice throughout the interior. The Trump logo is emblazoned on every surface, including the headrests of the opulent leather seats. The plane even has a small gourmet kitchen where food can be prepared and reheated. The kitchen sink also has a gold faucet. 
Would you expect anything less? When Trump used his 757 on a regular basis, he employed an entire crew to operate the jet. The pilots, flight attendants, and kitchen staff were all at Trump's beck and call. Trump's skilled executive chef often prepared five-star meals before flights. Of course, Trump doesn't always eat like a king. We all know how fond he is of fast food. Trump also enjoyed chomping down on Big Macs and buckets of the colonel's finest while aboard his 757. Trump Force One was spectacular in its heyday, but things aren't so rosy for the jumbo jet today. Trump hasn't flown his 757 since before he was inaugurated, and he's still not using the plane now that he's left office. It's currently sitting on a runway in need of major repairs. We're not just talking about a tune-up. It will likely cost millions just to make the plane operational again. One of the Rolls-Royce engines is missing a few parts, while the other isn't even on the plane. It's in need of serious repairs and sitting in storage shrink-wrapped in plastic. Fixing the broken engine could cost as much as $100,000, and some believe the total repair bill could be as high as $6 million. Trump hopes to fly high in Trump Force One again someday. He recently revealed that plans are underway to not only repair the jet, but give it a complete makeover. You might see Trump Force One grace the skies once again in the very near future. Trump expects the jet to be back in service and fully operational by the end of the year. The job won't be easy because leaving the plane exposed to the elements for so long certainly wasn't a good idea. Private jets like Trump 757 usually aren't left in the open in cold climate. Most are sent to warmer areas like Arizona or Nevada when hangar space isn't available. Until Trump's 757 is fully operational once more, he will have to keep using his $10 million 1997 Cessna 750 Citation X. It might not be as luxurious or powerful as the 757, but it's no slouch. When the Cessna 750 Citation X was first released, it was the fastest business jet in the world. The 750 Citation X can reach speeds of Mach 0.92. That's just under the speed of sound. It's still quite popular today. Many millionaire CEOs and celebrities use the super mid-sized jet on a regular basis. It's just not something you see billionaires fly around in very often. Gulfstreams and Learjets are simply more popular with people who are worth billions. Like the 757, the Cessna 750 Citation X has two Rolls-Royce engines. Each engine provides more than 6,000 pounds of thrust. The Citation X was quite groundbreaking when it was first released, as it was the first aircraft from Cessna to use Rolls-Royce engines and fully integrated avionics. Trump's Cessna 750 Citation X isn't as flashy as his 757. He hasn't plastered his name across this one, but it's still obvious that it's Trump's jet. Near the cockpit, you'll find Trump's signature gold crest. Trump still gets to travel comfortably when heading to rallies as his Cessna 750 Citation X can hold up to nine passengers and has a top-of-the-line interior. However, you won't find any gold trim inside this jet. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that Donald Trump is selling one of his helicopters? His 1990 Sikorsky S-76B is expected to sell for between $1 million and $1.5 million. It's quite obvious that this is Trump's chopper because the interior has cream white leather seats, gold fittings, and opulent mahogany furnishings. Trump actually sold another of his Sikorsky helicopters last year for an undisclosed price. He used to have three choppers, but will soon only have one. Hidden on a small Caribbean island, surrounded by the ocean and a stunning garden, sits one of the lesser-known properties belonging to Donald Trump. Yet this luxury estate is still worth an absolute fortune. Today, we're going to peek behind the curtain of the property known as La Chateau de Palmer. We'll see what features it holds and how much they would cost to build. We'll then see how much the house is worth and the cost to rent it for a vacation. On top of this, we'll look at some famous Caribbean neighbors that have their own sprawling estates to lounge within. So let's get started. Hidden away in the Northeast Caribbean Sea is the island of St. Martin. What makes this island unusual is the fact that two different governments operate on it, with the French in charge of the north section and the Dutch operating in the southern section, named St. Martin. This deal happened all the way back in 1648 with the two nations signing the Treaty of Concordia. 
St. Martin isn't one of the most expensive islands in the Caribbean. The cost per square meter is around $3,270, while the most expensive is Bermuda at slightly over double the cost at $7,060, while the cheapest island is said to be Puerto Rico at $1,010. For comparison, the most expensive in the world is Hong Kong with a price of $31,496. Yet considering Donald Trump has an estimated net worth of $2.5 billion, he certainly has the means to make a good living in St. Martin. In 2013, Donald Trump decided to purchase an estate on the island from his friend, businessman Steve Hilbert, and his wife Thomasu. At the time, the couple were looking for $19.7 million for the property. Yet the actual fee Trump paid is undisclosed. The property is called Le Chateau de Palmer. It's located in the French section. Yeah, the name was a pretty good hint, just off the beach of Plum Bay. The estate actually houses two villas, with nine bedrooms and 12 bathrooms altogether. First, let's look at the main villa that's closer to the beach. With five bedrooms, the master bedroom alone takes up two full stories. It also has an ensuite that has a jacuzzi bath. The master suite provides two balconies to choose from and an office to go along with its ocean views. Another bedroom worth mentioning is the regal suite. This room has two king-size beds with an ocean view and an ensuite bathroom. The ocean villa even has a commercial-grade kitchen. The second villa has four bedrooms, and it's positioned around a large garden. In the past, each of the rooms had different themes, such as the jungle room. Nowadays, the rooms aren't quite as elaborate, but just as luxurious. Each suite has an ensuite. Two of the rooms even have a living area attached to relax in private, away from the main living room. The villa also has a breakfast terrace to take in the scenery as you have some toast. Beyond the villas, there's also a two-bedroom estate manager's house within the five-acre compound. With the Caribbean weather famous for being hot, outside provides a large swimming pool. But even in the cooler months, the pool will still be comfortable since it's heated. Depending on the size, a swimming pool can easily cost over $100,000 to build, with the average cost of a pool in the U.S. being around $50,000. The annual maintenance fees are around $800 per year on the high end. Yet since it's heated, the cost of running the pool shoots up further. It can be as much as an extra $3,000 per year. Right next to Trump's pool is a bar and a cabana, with a number of red-roofed gazebos spread across the estate. There's a section of sunbeds around the pool to relax in as you take in the Caribbean sun. For those looking to stay in shape, the chateau also has a fully equipped gym. The cost of setting up a private gym can be as low as $500 and as high as $28,000, depending on the equipment purchased and the size of the space. But if sport is more your thing, there's a synthetic tennis court as well. Depending on the weather, the court uses clay, grass, asphalt, concrete, or acrylic. The cost of setting up a court can be really pricey. According to the experts, the lowest cost is around $45,000, with the highest hitting $100,000. But if you prefer a sport that doesn't require as much running, but does need quicker reactions, there's also a ping pong table on the property. In May 2017, Trump put Le Chateau de Palmer on the market. The asking price was set at $28 million. Yet by August of the same year, the price dropped by 40% to $16.9 million. But this property isn't used by the Trump family very often. In fact, it's primarily used as a rental income. From 2014 to 2017, Trump disclosed that the chateau provided an income of around $3 million in that time frame. To date, the estate has been taken off the market, while Forbes have estimated that it's worth $13 million in 2019. But it's still available to rent for wealthy holidayers. An added incentive to vacation is the staff provided in that fee, which includes a personal chef. Just in case you were wondering, personal chefs can cost as much as $420 per week in the U.S., and that's not including the price of groceries. In 2018, the rental price was around $11,400 per night. Since then, the price has dropped. For just the larger villa, the cost is $45,000 per week in the high season and $35,000 in the low season. But if you want to book the whole villa, it'll cost $60,000 in the high season and $45,000 in the low. On the high end, that makes it roughly $8,600 per night. This fall in rental costs could be due to a dip in income for Trump due to the global events. After all, many people have less disposable income currently. However, it could also be due to Trump's current reputation. In 2019, Bloomberg produced an article that discovered Trump's tower was New York's least desirable luxury building, with most condos since 2016 being sold for a loss. 
While a little over 99% of Manhattan's homes have sold for a profit during a similar time period. As for the famous Caribbean neighbors to Trump, one is Rolling Stone's frontman Mick Jagger. He owns a property called Star Groves on the island of Mystique. The Japanese-inspired villa was originally built in 1983 by architect Arnie Hasselquist. The property has six bedrooms and five bathrooms and offers a lot of privacy. The six bedrooms are spread out within seven separate pavilions. There's one pavilion that's just for entertainment. As such, it has a piano, a billiard table, and a media lounge. Within the middle of the pavilions is a 25-foot-long swimming pool with a gazebo so guests can shelter from the strong sun. During 2016, the property was available for rent. For the low season, the price was $16,500 for the week, while the high season, $30,000. The Caribbean seems to be very attractive to the Rolling Stones, as bandmate Keith Richards also owns a property in the region. And yes, he's still alive. His house is on Parrot K, based in the Turks and Caicos Islands. This particular area can be very expensive to rent from. A villa for space for six people that also has butler service can cost as much as $10,105 per night. Another Parrot K resident is Bruce Willis, only he's actually a former resident. In March 2019, he put his Asian-inspired five-bedroom estate on the market with an asking price of $33 million. The master bedroom alone takes up the entire second story. The 7.3-acre property that Willis purchased in 2000 even features a yoga pavilion, a home cinema, and a playground with a large pirate ship. In August 2019, the property was eventually sold for around 18% below the asking price at $27 million. Willis just missed out on claiming the title for the island's most expensive property sale as nearby Oliver's Cove sold for $27.5 million in 2016. Since Willis's house had a pirate ship, it's only fair we look at the property belonging to a famous film pirate Johnny Depp. But instead of just a mansion, he has his own private island, Little Hall's Pond K. Based in the Bahamas, Depp bought the 45-acre island back in 2004 for a reported $3.6 million. He purchased the island after seeing it while filming 2003's Pirates of the Caribbean. He then built a ranch-style house with 360-degree views of the island. Mar-a-Lago is filled with excessive luxury, like $7 million worth of gold decor and a gift shop full of Donald Trump souvenirs. The businessman turned president bought the property for only $5 million in 1985, about 10 times less than what the original owner paid. With membership prices that include a $200,000 initiation fee, the ultra-exclusive club has made more than $20 million a year since Trump took office. Now, the Secret Service is planning his life after the presidency, which includes renovating the club so they can officially move in. Here's a look inside the luxurious Mar-a-Lago and the incredibly wealthy history behind the now-famous estate. What is it really like to live like Donald Trump? He's lived in the White House, numerous penthouses, and multiple mansions, but no property is more famous and more representative of his opulent lifestyle and extravagant taste than this exclusive beachfront country club. Mar-a-Lago is a 128-room mansion in Palm Beach, Florida, located on 20 acres of lush waterfront property. It actually spans the width of the entire island it's located on. Originally built in 1927 by wealthy serial heiress Marjorie Merriweather Post, Donald Trump forked over $5 million for the property back in 1985. By 1995, he turned the estate into a full-fledged and ultra-exclusive club modeled after European palaces. Trump nicknamed the property Winter White House, which is fitting since Post had originally wanted her estate to be used as a seasonal retreat for sitting presidents. The resort is now estimated to be worth between $200 million and $300 million, thanks in large to Trump's luxurious taste and extensive renovations, and the fact that it's huge. It has 58 bedrooms and 33 bathrooms. One of the first things Trump did to the mansion after buying it was build a 20,000 square foot ballroom with $7 million worth of gold leaf decorations. He married Melania in this ballroom and often references the wedding's famous guests, like his political opponent, Hillary Clinton. Trump's love for gold doesn't stop there though. He also spent about $100,000 on four gold-plated sinks and decorated the mansion's many rooms with lots of chandeliers, 16th century Flemish tapestries, and unique oriental rugs. There's also an expensive 1927 Steinway Baby Grand Piano worth somewhere between $70,000 and $150,000. Even the formal dining table is pure art. The grand dining room emulates Rome's Kigi Palace. Trump also adapted a coat of arms for his family thanks to all the expensive furniture and antiques he bought with the estate. He commandeered the coat of arms which once belonged to Joseph Edward Davies, Post's third husband, and had the Latin word for integrity replaced with Trump.
Another perk to the property is that it's a quick helicopter ride away from Trump International Golf Club, also in Palm Beach. To pay for all this, Trump has made sure Mar-a-Lago only attracts the richest guests. To get them interested in the resort, he built a ton of useful amenities on the property, including a spa, beach club, and tennis and croquet courts. To make them really want to come, he made sure only the wealthiest could afford the costs. Club members used to pay a $100,000 initiation fee, plus annual dues of $14,000 for access to the estate. That price doesn't even include taxes and the minimum annual cost of food that each guest has to spend at the club, which is $2,000. Following Trump's presidential victory, Mar-a-Lago's initiation fee quickly went up to $200,000, but the increase seems to have been worth it. Mar-a-Lago has been fairly profitable over the years. Trump made about $15.6 million from the club in 2014, but after he became president, the annual revenue went up to about $25.2 million in 2017, before dipping a bit to $21.4 million in 2019. The club is also worth it for the guests. With membership, they gain access to luxurious pools, beaches, dining halls, and private lounges. They can also rent out entire rooms, like that glorious ballroom, for private events like weddings and charity galas. Trump has also used the club for his own presidential events and retreats. He's hosted world leaders at the resort, like Chinese President Xi Jinping, and treated them to extravagant dinners and parties. According to the Government Accountability Office, Trump's trips to Mar-a-Lago in 2017 cost taxpayers at least $13.6 million, while all the trips throughout his whole presidency may have cost them more than $60 million. The amount of money Trump has made from the property is mostly the result of the amazing deal he managed to score when he first bought it in 1985 for about 10 times less than what was originally spent building it. To understand how Mar-a-Lago has become so famous, let's take a quick look at the building's extremely rich history. Mar-a-Lago's original owner was Marjorie Merriweather Post. She was once the wealthiest woman in America, with a net worth of about $200 million near the end of her life, which is about $1.5 billion today when adjusted for inflation. This incredible wealth came from her inheriting the profitable Postum Cereal Company from her father after he passed away in 1914. Soon after his passing, she started building Mar-a-Lago with specific ideas of what luxury should look like, which included lots of art, gold accents, and an extensive library. Once construction was completed, she had spent about $7 million on the property, which is equal to more than $120 million today. Mar-a-Lago has always been extremely extravagant, thanks to the big names Post hired to work on the property. American architect Marion Sims Wyeth handled the design of the estate, while Viennese designer Joseph Urban, who also worked on a number of royal palaces in Europe, did the interior design. Some of the mansion's most striking characteristics were the black and white marble floor blocks, on which there were 2,200. Post also had a collection of 36,000 Spanish tiles dating back to the 15th century and 20,000 roofing tiles that came from a Cuban castle. The gold leaf covered living room ceiling is one of the estate's most famous features and was inspired by a ceiling in the Academia of Venice. Mrs. Post was so extra that while living there, she even had circus performers providing entertainment at all of her big parties. In 1973, Post decided to donate her prized mansion to the U.S. government to be used as the president's winter White House. But in 1981, the government returned it, citing the $1 million annual maintenance cost as the reason why. Instead, they decided to declare it an historic landmark. Donald Trump reportedly coveted the mansion for a while and made a generous first offer of about $28 million, but he was turned down since the estate was technically a piece of protected history. But eventually, Trump ended up getting extremely lucky. When the market slumped, he managed to get his hands on the property for only $5 million, which is about $12 million today. He paid an additional $3 million, $7.2 million today, for all of Post's antiques and furniture. From there, Trump quickly went to work on the renovations, keeping Post's opulent style while adding his own touches, like a glamorous gold-framed portrait of himself. Mar-a-Lago has long been one of the places everyone wants a chance to explore, but unless you have a membership, you aren't getting any farther than the gates. With its rich history, it's believed that there are hundreds if not thousands of interesting antiques and secrets hidden inside the mansion that have yet to be explored. Anthony Senecal was Trump's former butler and also served as Mar-a-Lago's unofficial historian, and in 2016, he revealed a couple of these secrets. He said that the library is full of century-old books, including rare first editions, that he never saw any of the Trumps reading. He's also talked about how the Trump family kept mostly to their private wing of the residence, where Trump's children grew up. 
Another big secret is what exactly the Secret Service will do on the property once Trump is no longer president. U.S. presidents receive protection even after they leave office, so a few Secret Service agents will be following him to his Mar-a-Lago pad, which he's named his official residence. Renovations are apparently underway to make a Secret Service appropriate wing, though they can't give away any information on what exactly that entails for security reasons. To give you an idea how much it might cost, keep in mind that while president, Trump charged the Secret Service for rooms at his club, which came to about $650 a night per room. It's expected that Trump could easily add a million dollars worth of renovations to the mansion to make it Secret Service appropriate and to amp up its security protections. It might be a bit hard to keep the former president protected at all times, though, since guests are constantly wandering the property and enjoying all the luxuries it has to offer. The mansion has been described as a palace, and as such, there are also a lot of rooms and space to cover when it comes to ensuring proper protection. While Mar-a-Lago is famous for many reasons, some of them are a bit controversial, though they mostly have to do with Trump's urge to keep his estate as grand and exclusive as possible. His specific taste has led Trump into having his fair share of fights with Palm Beach over the county's property rules. In 2006, his 80-foot-tall American flagpole violated Palm Beach ordinances and was incurring a fine of $250 a day. Trump sued for $25 million, claiming his free speech was being violated by the county's rule. They eventually came to an agreement, though, and the flag was moved to a 70-foot-tall pole while Trump donated $100,000 to veterans' charities instead of paying the fines. But in 2015, Trump sued Palm Beach County again, this time over airspace. He said that the county was making deliberate and malicious moves to direct departing flights from the Palm Beach International Airport right over Mar-a-Lago. The suit was dropped after the 2016 election, since the residence is now a no-fly zone for security reasons. It may continue that way after he moves back into the mansion, though it's possible another lawsuit will be necessary to keep the club quiet enough for Trump and his guests to enjoy. So Mar-a-Lago might not be all sunshine and rainbows, but it's safe to say that the opulent property has attracted America's curiosity. With its extravagant decor and even more extravagant membership prices, it's hard to say whether or not the club's revenue will increase or decrease following Trump's presidency. Trump has been known to take a very active stance on the club's operations, always asking guests what they enjoyed and what the staff can do better next time. It's entirely possible that his being back at the club will improve its services even more, and perhaps attract more guests interested in joining a club owned by a former American president who also lives there. One thing's for sure, though, Trump got himself a bargain for this historic mansion, and there are likely more secrets and priceless artifacts behind its doors that we may never even know about. Would you join Mar-a-Lago if you could? Or how about pay for an in-depth tour? Let us know in the comments down below and feel free to tell us what famous property you'd like us to explore. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more. Thanks for watching.